Thank you everyone for tuning in to our Stay Connected series webinar. We're so glad you're with us today. We have a really special agenda for our conversation, but first let me introduce myself. I'm Eva Schulte. I serve as the Executive Director for Institutional Advancement at Whatcom Community College. And this Stay Connected series is part of the Whatcom Community College Foundation's effort to stay connected with our community supporters, our campus, and our donors through the online setting that COVID-19 has created. So we've uh, made lemonade and uh, boy, we've been so happy to have 350 people tune in to our webinar series uh, since March. Um, it really is a testament to how much this community comes together and we value your participation today. So for those of you who just tuned in, uh, please note, we want to hear from you. We want to know who's online and uh, you can introduce yourself via the chat feature. If you're unfamiliar with the webinar, uh, Zoom webinar, it's right below the screen. And if you just pull your toggle down, it should come up. You can see chat and go ahead and introduce yourself, your name, if you're an alumni with Whatcom, uh, include the years you attended. We're so glad to welcome you this morning. So if you have any technical difficulty, if you haven't heard already, please note you can direct any questions to WCC Foundation via the chat as well, and we'll assist with that. And questions and answers. We're so excited for you to have the direct opportunity to hear from the National Adult Learner of the Year Award winner and our very own student Cecilia de Leon and the community that supported her through Wacom. So I'm sure you'll have lots of interesting questions to engage her around. Feel free to uh, put those forward now or later during the Q&A and you can just um, type that directly in and we'll respond as time permits. So with no further time, I want to introduce to you uh, our president of Whatcom Community College, President Kathy Hiani Brown. Good morning. Thank you very much, Eva. Um, again, like Eva, this is a very special event because once again, we have an opportunity to um, identify and to put on the podium and on stage an outstanding student at Whatcom Community College. And today we have Cecilia de Leon and uh, she has been recognized as the 2020 Adult Learner of the Year from a very prestigious um, adult education national organization. Uh, she was selected for her outstanding uh, academic achievements as well as her contributions to the college community, as well as to the community at large. So on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the community at Whatcom Community College, I congratulate Cecilia on her accomplishment. And is, by the way, no small accomplishments. And as you listen to her story, please keep in mind that she has had a number of people, faculty, staff, and community members who have surrounded her. And one must not forget the fact that Cecilia is a mother of two and her children have been such, uh, such wonderful supporters throughout her um, achievements here at Whatcom. So Cecilia, I'm waiting to hear more from you, but if I could just say a few words um, about you. Uh, it was in November of 2019, 12 years after embarking on her journey, that she earned her GED here at Whatcom. And now Cecilia is a student at Whatcom Community College. And I have learned that her daughter has just joined her is, and is also a student here at Whatcom. She is also fortunate to have a son in her family and her son has just graduated from high school and is looking at his options, uh, trying to figure out what to do in life. Uh, Cecilia, you might say to your son that there are some of us that are still trying to figure out what to do in our lives. 
So he may have a future of being a lifelong learner, and that's not bad at all. So during her pursuit of her GED uh, at Wadcom, uh, Cecilia had not only raised two children, but had battled significant health issues. She also has been able to, with the assistance of her children and other friends and her community, uh, been able to successfully succeed academically. And now we not only have a student who's successful, but we have a student here in Cecilia who's contributed greatly to the larger community. And if you listen to some of her life experiences, you will know just what she has done to contribute uh, to the greater good. Cecilia started out working as a farm worker and became familiar with the work of Community to Community, which is a local organization that promotes social justice for farm workers. And during that time, she has lobbied against sexual misconduct among immigrant workers and was honored with the Seeds of Justice Award for her tireless work here. She has also actively stood against the Department of Licensing's record sharing agreement with the US Immigration and Customs Enforcement that really impeded on the rights of immigrant families. She continues her work for social justice and for good of the people. And thank you, uh, Cecilia, for all of that work because I know your schedule must be very rigorous and at times very challenging, but you have found time for your family, for your academic studies, and for your community involvement. So thank you. I was so very fortunate um, to have seen the video, Cecilia. I had got a little preview of the video that um, you're going to share uh, with the rest of the audience upon the receipt of your award. But I, want, I have a question before we start that video. And I want to ask you if you could share with us where you get your inspiration for pursuing your dreams and your goals? Well, um, it has to start with when I started going for my GED about 12 years ago. You know, I guess you could say I was there, but I wasn't there on what I wanted to do. Um, but I had two teachers that were Don and Guava that will soon be meeting. And um, Don would always tell me, uh, everyone's going to have their ups and downs in life. Um, but the thing is to never give it, you know, when you fall, never give up, just keep on going, you know, and then there is guava to saying that you're going to get there. You're going to get there. These words inspired me because I didn't know the journey and the challenges I was going to face through the next 12 years with the cancer, you know, being a single mom and um, these words of, of inspiration helped me and they help my children. Uh, my children are my inspiration. Uh, I look at it that, you know, I could sit here and think about what it could have been, but I'd rather think about, about like, um, what's going to happen. I don't want to have that in the back of my head. Well, what could have been? I want to go for it. So with my kids as my inspiration and Don and Guava's words of, inspiration it just has kept me going and it's like I don't want to stop I guess you could say I'm just going for it <laughs> that's great that's great well thank you and thank you to Guava Don and your family for supporting you on this journey so tell us about this video that we're about to um, watch um, this was, I was actually supposed to be down in Baltimore and they were getting, uh, it was going to be an in-person award, uh, ceremony, but of course COVID came out and that just took away my experience, but it's okay. This is a new experience for me, challenging myself on Zoom. So it's okay. Right. And so this video is when kind of like my acceptance of the award, but through Zoom and it talks about my journey and what I've overcome and the people who have helped me uh, get to where I have been, where I am today. 
Okay, well, thank you. Well, let's see if we can get this video to run and hear and witness Cecilia receiving her award. <laughs> school at a young age because due to family issues, racism, and just a bunch of stuff, you know, and about 10 years ago, I started going to college where I met uh, Don Krunji, who was my English teacher, and Jordan Guava, who's my math teacher. They would always tell me, you know, you're going to get there, you're going to get there, and everybody has uh, bumps in their lives. It's just about getting back up and going at it again and never giving up. You know, and during that time when I was getting my GD, I ran into bumps, uh, marital problems, you know, just just a bunch of stuff. After with the marital problems, I went back, but then I ran into some other life problems, and then I went back again, and that's when we found out that I had cancer, so there goes that. And then I would start up again after my first surgery, and... I was actually almost there to go take my GED uh, math test and I got called in for another emergency surgery. So I had to end up leaving it again. And this was, yeah, probably I'm gonna say like three years ago. And then four months before November, I actually graduated and got my GED. I was in my class and I just remember my teacher coming to me and she was really serious. I thought, okay, well something went wrong on the test. You know, maybe I didn't pass my test. She's like, after class, I want to see you. She's like, I need to talk with you. I'm like, okay. It's like, okay, I'm just going to take it how it is. If, it, you know, I didn't pass, it's okay. Just got to keep on going, you know. It's okay, don't give up. She takes me into Guava's uh, office, and they they told me to sit down, and they um, started telling me and handing me a letter. And they're like, uh, we sent in a letter to uh, COAB for Adult Student of the Year because we believe that you are a student and a leader within Whatcom County and through the college. I started crying and she's like, you know, I don't want you to get your hopes up because you know, there's how many colleges throughout, you know, the US and you know, I go, you know, it's not, it's not about winning. My thing is I'm leaving my fingerprint, but I want people to understand no matter how hard life could get, don't give up. Just keep on going, push for your dreams and just go for it. I want to be that leader too for justice, you know. I have been seeing so much discrimination during the time of my GED. There was a lot of people there from different cultures, you know. And you know they're kind of scared to ask for that help and my instinct is just to go out and help them. So I was helping them trying to get into their classes, you know, and where to go and, and stuff. And it just, to me by nature, I, I guess I've learned to have that empathy to everything that I have lived from. I am taking sociology right now and I am taking, gonna be taking up psychology again. And then in my English 101 class, we are doing writing on what we feel in our hearts about what's happening right now. So uh, somewhere it's gonna have to be fighting for justice and social work, I'm feeling, because that's something that I have in my heart. I just wanted my kids to know, I guess my kids are my focus point. And I guess it's all started before the cancer too, you know, it's just like, life's gonna get hard. You're gonna throw oddballs at you, you can't give up. You can't give up because you're gonna give up on something that you don't know what the outcome, outcome can be. You know, and I wanted my kids to know that yeah, it may, may take me 10 years, it might take me more than that to get my high school diploma. But I want to get there. It's never too late. Um, I'm sorry I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> um, if it wasn't for my kids always believing in me and pushing me too, I probably wouldn't be here. Um, and then it'd be Don Karunji because she's been a teacher, my advocate, an angel that has helped me through. I just remember I had to go down to the Cancer Institute when I was in class. I think that was in October or the beginning of November. And I had to have some injections put into my stomach. I didn't want to miss class. So she's like, no, just go ahead, you know, take your break. I was like, I ain't missing class. I go, I can't, I can't do that. I go, I can't have pity on myself because I know I'll get over just pain. I just got to go for it. 
So I'm sitting in class. I have my pillow. I remember holding my pillow close to my stomach because the pain was pretty bad. And she tells me, you sit where you need to sit. You need to sit on the floor. Go sit on the floor. You know, just make yourself comfortable. You know, and I think she knew that the pain was getting to me. And she kept, she walked past me and she's like, she would whisper to me, you got this girl. You got this girl. And she would never let me doubt myself. You know, she had... Her and Guava have this thing to where they have so their teachers that have such passion to want to see their their students succeed, and that's something you don't see a lot of. And I really want to thank them all, and also with Rosalina Lake and the president of um, Community to Community for giving me the opportunity to understand a lot of stuff too with what's happening in life right now and help me become a stronger leader. I guess you, everyone wants to call it. Um, but I think those are the people and probably the people that have came into my life and helped me grow and understand a lot of what's going on right now in life. Oh my goodness. Wow. Cecilia, uh, would you please join us on visual? I mean, I've seen the video, but every time I hear your story, your resilience is an inspiration to all of us. And um, just carving out the time to share with those on, on this webinar today, your story is, is something I'm grateful for. And um, please do share with us what, what, um, what kept you going? Um, I guess, you know, I can't really explain what kept me going besides Don's words and Guava's words and, um, my, my children. But when I was receiving this award, um, I guess you could say, I've never had that uh, closure of feeling like I've overcome. And when I received this award, um, I don't know if many of you have heard the song, Fight Song, um, but it goes like, this, this is my fight song, take back my life song, prove I'm all right song. <laughs> and we still have a lot of fight left in me. To me, it's like, closing the door um the words show me that i took back my life and i'm proving i'm okay and i still got a lot of fight left in me i'm still feisty and i'm still going whether life wants to knock me down i'm gonna get back up and i'm gonna keep on going um that's probably why i keep on going it's with don's words and my kids and guava's words of inspiration and knowing that i'm gonna be okay Wow. Thank you, Cecilia. That's a good song. Fight yeah. song. And I, it was written for leaders like you. Thank you. So um, you introduced them already. And uh, it's so clear that you have a team of supporters and cheerleaders and ambassadors around you. So I'm, I'm so glad that today on this conversation we have with us Guava Jordan and Don Krucha. And will you please join the conversation, Don and Guava? Thank you, welcome. So Don and Guava are two of Cecilia's instructors and they are the ones that nominated Cecilia for the award. It's not hard to see excellence at Whatcom in our students, but it does take an extra step and certainly extra time to position our students in a way that others see them shine. So thank you on behalf of Whatcom Community College and the Foundation Guava and Don. Would you please introduce yourselves and share more with those tuning in about your roles at Whatcom? Are you gonna go first, Guava? <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure. Um, I'm Guava Jordan and I uh, teach in the uh, transitional learning department. I specifically, I teach um, adult basic education and high school completion. Um, and so um, that entails uh, GED, um, getting people like uh, ready for GED and um, college prep um, 
preparing students for college classes. Um, the, and also we have a high school completion program um, that is um, online and it's for returning adults. So different than it, the Running Start program, um, but it is completely online designed that way before the coronavirus and competency based. So um, I love Cecilia, what you highlighted about um, the students that are in our classes and that were in the classes with you, um, you know, diverse population and having lots of obstacles, but so much motivation. Um, and really they inspire me to do the teaching and the work. So it's like a mutual <laughs> inspiration. Um, we're on that journey together. Um, and so, you know, the students in our programs just want to follow their educational goals. Um, and also be a model um, for their families and their community like Cecilia is. And so that's really a part of um, your path. It's inspired me a lot, Cecilia. It's just your um, always being so committed to community and to social justice. So uh, yeah, that's a little about me. I'll pass the mic to Dawn. <laughs> Thanks, Guava. Um, I'm going to echo what Guava said. Um, I do teach in the transitional learning program. So for students finishing uh, their high school diploma and GED or transition into college. Um, and I've done this work for about 20 years now. And um, Cecilia just exemplifies, I think, what we see in all of our students. Um, students who come in um, having some incredible barriers, but incredible resiliency um, and passion and drive. And um, it is such a joy to have those um, students and to see them uh, grow and reach those goals and move on. And um, Cecilia, uh, I said before, and I want to echo it to everyone listening, is that you really come into a class and you're like that dream student that just makes everyone better. It makes me a better teacher and it makes every student in the classroom a better learner. And um, it has been an absolute joy to have you um, be recognized for your work and your resiliency and your strength. So congratulations from all of us, but me especially. <laughs> and, and Don and Guava, just for emphasis sake, would you just tell them a little more about what a big deal this award is, right? There is one National Adult Learner of the Year Award, and Cecilia De Leon is the winner. But to help, it, help everyone understand what a big deal this is for us. So, so sorry, we're looking at each other saying, okay, who's going? Um, so this is an award that um, is given to one student in the nation by the um, Council on Adult Basic Education, really a national umbrella organization for anyone doing adult basic ed. It's kind of that pinnacle capstone kind of organization and uh, they do a lot of legislation. Um, one of the things that Cecilia didn't mention um, is that um, in winning this award, uh, we were to be in Baltimore and had scheduled to meet with our legislators about adult basic ed. And so COVID kind of messed that up. Um, but um, so the Council of Basic Ed really works legislatively also around funding and um, development of programs. So it is a really big deal. I think that was my thing that I was looking forward to to actually go to speak on behalf of adult education and COVID took it all away. But <laughs> I'm pretty sure it'll, there's gonna be another chance. Um, so, but I also want uh, people to understand too that if it wasn't for you and Guava, I know I am not, I won't, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Like I said, you guys aren't just teachers, you guys are also an inspiration to a lot of students. Um, it's the way you guys teach, your guys' compassion, your guys' empathy towards the students. You want to see them success, you understand them, you try to understand where they come from. And that helps the students a lot, a lot. And to me, like I said, I told you guys before, you guys aren't just my teachers, you guys are like a guardian angel that have been watching me through 
my steps of life that and all my challenges. Guardian angels. You know, I think we all need a few more. So, wow, Guava and Don, add that to your uh, credentials and resume. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, just a reminder for those that are tuned in with us, if you have a question or feedback you want to engage Cecilia, Don, or Guava around, please uh, do type that in to Q&A. And if you haven't already introduced yourself, please do that by chat. And of course, if you're an alumni with Whatcom, include the years you were with us. So Q&A can be found just below um, your, you toggle down to the bottom of the screen. And, you know, I want to just help people here understand why does adult learning matter right now? And how can we support people who are experiencing challenges um, and amazing life hurdles uh, like Cecilia described? Guava, could you start? Sure, thank you. Um, I, I do, as Cecilia highlighted, um, we do have a wide variety. We serve English language learners, adult um, basic education and high school completion. And what I've seen, especially in high school completion, which is online, and so it gives access to, to um, people that, uh, ooh, of course, someone's doing yard work right now, but hopefully that doesn't interrupt, um, is uh, people, adults who are returning, who haven't, maybe they entered the workforce without getting their diploma. And so in order to follow their educational goals and career goals, um, need, need to come back and, and get that. Um, and, but they're working full time and have families full time and then they're, they're going to school on top of that. And so a lot of times it can be a life situation that can kind of interrupt that journey, like it, as we see with Cecilia, but it just, it's a long, long, just, we just keep going um, in encouraging that lifelong learning that um, President um, Kathy referred to. And so another thing that I see is a lot of students just like Cecilia who are stay at home moms or single moms or working moms. <laughs> and so, um, and I've read statistics and evidence that, you know, educating women and moms brings up a whole community, it raises a whole community. So I do think that, um, uh, that that's a really important role of, of the transitional learning program, adult basic education um, and high school completion um, at Whatcom Community College. Donna, I don't know if you have more to add. <laughs> I, I, I um, agree, Guava. I think uh, it's such a rich um, classroom of experience. And um, I think that adult learners come with a vision um, and wanting to change that narrative in their life and how they begin to see themselves. And so I think of our classroom as a place where you can change your story, um, where you can envision what life can be um, for you and for your family. And to be able to support those stories um, for students, I think is um, so critical and something that I really strongly believe in um, for everyone who comes into the class. So well said. Don and Guava. And wow, we have such beautiful comments coming through too. It's really neat. I mean, Suni saying how proud she is to have been invited just into the space to celebrate Cecilia and others giving you all sorts of recognition, Cecilia and the team around you. It's just beautiful if you haven't read them yet. Um, a couple questions came in as well. Um, wanted to start with um, Mon uh, Monique Stephens. Uh, oh, Monique. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to thank you, Cecilia. She said, it's an honor to serve you through BFET as you raise your voice across the campus and community. Who do you see needing more support? What support would you most, would most benefit them? And what support would most benefit you as you move toward your degree? Wow, that's one long question. Um... There's a lot of support that's needed right now. Um, 
how do I go about this one? Monique, you really threw a question out there for me. <laughs> um, for the people, how do I say it? I want everybody to have that equal rights to education. Um, it's something really important to me, being a single mom, you know, not able to go out there and get a good, good job, you know, to keep our, my, mine and my family's head above the water. You know, I have to have a GD diploma, you know, but that still isn't going to make, make do, you know, so just like, I think about all the other women, even single fathers out there that are th going through the same struggle, you know, and there's people that want to turn around their lives. And I think, you know, getting funding for these, these people that are in need and want to change their lives for the better um, is really important. Very, very important. I want just how Don and Guava wants one to see their students succeed. I want to see other students succeed. It's a joy for me to see people overcome their challenges and I like to take part of that and help them. Um, for myself, uh, Monique, I think my thing is is getting that getting the help to help run uh, bring in funds for those people that are in need. I mean, I might stumble across, you know, having some issues uh, in college, but right now I think I'm on a good roll. And that is because of you, because you helped me get going. You were the first one that set me up with my class, college classes and listened to me and got me where I wanted, where I needed to go on my path. But for right now, I think I'm good. I just want to figure out how I could help other students that are in times of trouble and challenges. Wow. Thanks, Cecilia. And then just a note for those who um, haven't heard of BFED before, it is Basic Food Employment and Training Program. So um, we do try to avoid acronyms at WCC. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, so uh, not so funny. More questions. Uh, we have uh, Sue Lonick. Thank you, Sue. Cecilia, can you share what you do to take care of yourself uh, when you run into obstacles or feel like you can't go on? How do you feel, how, how do you help rest, heal, and feel stronger? To take your next step um but besides uh guavas and don's words of inspiration there'll be times i just pick up i'll just pick up and go walking i'll go to the park um sometimes my son will take me up into the mountain i just need to let it go i guess you can say whatever is like on top of my shoulders i just getting out in the nature helps me like release a lot of my stuff stress you know, it, it's like, I feel energized after I come back. Let's just put it that way. It's like just being around nature helps me calm myself. Well, you live in a good place for that. In <laughs> County. Uh, Cecilia, SUNY Eisenberg asks, what would you say to someone who's thinking about pursuing um, a degree, a GED or HS21? What's the first step? That it, <laughs> um, well, from my experience, I'm going to go for, off of my experience. Um, there are going to be challenges, uh, but those challenges are meant to be. Um, those are what is, is what's going to help a person grow and understand and learning. Um, but it's when you come up, uh, across that challenge, it's not to give up. Just take that challenge face on and go for it. Whether, you know, it could take you, it could take a person a day. It could take a person a week. Look at me, it took me 12 years. But the thing is, is never give up. So you could uh, have, feel like success, you know, and just remember if the, you, could, uh, you don't pass a class, it's not failure. You're just growing. That is something very important to me. There, to me, there's no failure in my dictionary. It's just growing. Mm. Beautiful. Um, you got a, another few uh, comments related <laughs> to um, how proud people are of you. Toby Martinez uh, and Guava, you're, you're up next. I see you have something to say. I have known Cecilia over the years in our program. Cecilia is an amazing person and so very inspiring. I have been privileged to see her success and to work with such amazing faculty. That's from Toby Martinez. Oh, Toby. <laughs> she always has a smile on her face. <laughs>
Oh, I was just going to add just um, if there are people out there who, who um, want to help guide someone to our program, if you go to Wacom's main page, there is a button for our program. There's four buttons. Ours is the bottom right. Um, uh, so that is a great place to click on that button, see how to get started, email our transitional learning um, program at wacom.edu. But we have online registration so we can guide students right into the the best program that fits their needs. So I have a question, Guava. I um, mm -hmm. actually had some people, uh, Latinos in my community, ask me, because they want to start their GED or finish their schooling. Is, is it in Spanish too? It is? Yes. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, GED is, is a test that's administered through Pearson. So we just prepare people for it. But in the end, there is a version in Spanish and in English. So um, I just advise people to take whichever version is the most um, they're most comfortable in. Um, but there is that option. And we do have scholarships too to help students financially with with tests. Um, so that's a great question. <laughs> And, uh, you know, no one has tuned off, just so you know, on this webinar yet, but uh, just to keep you um, engaged, we do have a special announcement related to that, so stay tuned to the end. But a few more questions and comments first. Uh, Tim Douglas asks you, Cecilia, are your kids still in school? And if so, how are you all managing issues of school reopening? President Kathy alluded to uh, the pride of having your daughter at Whatcom Community College. We are thrilled about that. But yeah, would you like to expand on that? Well, my daughter and I, since we're in college um, together, we take classes together, like we're taking English 101. But it's like, sometimes we bump our heads, you know, it's like we have the same ideas and stuff. So, but my son, that was an adventure. We had to do it online. <laughs> We got through it. We made it, you know, and, but right now my, it just, my daughter and I that are in school, um, my son, he's looking into what he wants to be still. So he's just out job hunting. Got it. Yeah, we have help for that too. Uh, if you tuned in on our webinar last month, uh, or a few weeks ago actually, we um, just launched WCC Pathways, which is a great connection to internships and job opportunities. So if your son's not hooked up yet, Whatcom wants to uh, engage with him too, Cecilia. Well, hey, I will take that into consideration because we have been putting applications and yeah. Good. <laughs> We'll follow up offline, but, but first, uh, another a question Jason Bradley asks, well, actually states, Cecilia, you are my hero. On top of fighting health battles and pursuing your education, you're a tireless advocate for justice. Whatcom County loves and needs you. Has your education helped you inform and empower your advocacy for others? Okay, Jason, I love you to death. You know that. Um... You've also been an inspiration to me with the social justice. Uh, has it helped me? Yeah, especially with the teachers I've had because um, their empathy has taught me a lot. I guess it's not about always being face up in the book studying. Teachers uh, show a lot and teach a lot through their uh, with their compassion towards the students and. Um, their fight for equality there, I guess you could see. So it's opened up my eyes a lot. And I've learned in that way a lot. It's not always about being in books there. And then with my English 101, you know, it wasn't about being in books. It's what it, we were doing social justice stuff. And it's just, I have learned so much and it's helped me a long ways. It helped, they've, I've learned from the students too, because I've got, um, to hear other point of views to understand. Yeah, I can understand my point of view, but I don't always understand other points of views. So I've learned a lot about asking more questions uh, and not doing a single story. The day, I don't know if anybody's heard the story of the danger of the single story. Um, a lot of people do it. I have done it, um, but I've learned something not to be doing, you know, when we're trying to think we're helping somebody, but we're actually doing something worse we could actually be making them feel worse so I have learned a lot yes being here at college I have thanks Cecilia um, I don't have time to actually read all these great comments <laughs> so let me just say there was uh, appreciation stated for um, 
mentioning single fathers as well and recognizing um, how everyone is on a path and lately that path has been extra hard for so many and um, just uh, other congratulations here for you um, Cecilia about how fortunate Whatcom Community College is to have um, you know faculty and students that have such heart in uh, the work and their pursuit for education so um, I know you have a very, very exciting announcement to share, and uh, I'd love for you to do that now, please, Cecilia. So to me, empathy is something very important. Um, it's something that people learn from, I guess you could say. Empathy is kind of like, to me, you're stepping into somebody else's shoes. You're trying to understand where they're coming from. So you learn their point of view, and it's kind of like a fingerprint. You learn from them you take it with you and then you go to another person, you take what you've learned and show it to them or vice versa, the person gonna show you. So empathy is something very important to me. And another thing is, is that with the empathy comes, you gotta come to understand that um, when you're stepping in other people's shoes, you're gonna, everybody's different. And that's something that needs to be understood. Um, everybody is equal. Just because we look different, we think different, doesn't mean that we're not equal. Um, so I am going, I am wanting, well, actually I am opening up a fund. It's called the Empathy and Equity Funds. And this is for single moms, single dads, um, young people coming out of incarcerations that want to change their life, uh, people that are going through struggles in life, uh, did I say undocumented, for the undocumented, and we got the international students who are in a really hard struggle too right now. But let's just say it's for everybody. I believe everybody deserves a fair education to better their life. I don't think anybody should be, uh, have to quit because they couldn't afford their medication, so they had to give up, you know, schooling because their medication came first. So this funding is to help people overcome their challenges and help them stay into school. It's so inspiring, Cecilia. And we just could not be more honored as Whatcom Community College Foundation to partner with you. And thank you for catalyzing this fund, the Empathy and Equity Fund, right? Named by Cecilia de Leon our National Adult Award winner uh, for uh, with $1,000. So Cecilia, thank you for catalyzing this fund with that contribution. It can go a long ways when students are struggling. And the Empathy and Equity Fund is built around you and your story. And as you just shared, creates space for other students' stories to shine. So we are thrilled about the future of our students at Whatcom, how you and others, the donors, the campus community, the community partners, the faculty and staff at Whatcom, fellow students will support them in their journey as a community that is indeed coming together, staying connected and believes in empathy and equity and acts on it. So, um, of course, we invite all of you to join us today and follow Cecilia's lead in supporting these funds, which will go directly to our students. We're launching it. Is it today, Cecilia? I think it's today. It's today. Yeah, so it's today. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't already know how to donate, uh, you can certainly do that through the little gift box. Uh, which is on our uh, WCC Foundation page and on the Whatcom Community College website. It's in the top right-hand corner. Sorry, I should do this, I guess, as you're looking at me. Uh, it's in the top right-hand corner. It's a little gift box. Click on that. You'll see the Empathy and Equity Fund and be able to contribute today to help support students. Um, and in honor of you, Cecilia, we uh, thank you and those who have supported you uh, for your leadership and all you bring. Thanks for tuning in to those participants and uh, spread the word about the Empathy and Equity Fund to support emergency needs. Thank Thanks you. everyone.